the cosmology of the Urantia papers is presented on such a grand scale that it can be challenging to take in through the narrative alone. With advanced computing power and software, we can more readily, graphically, represent revealed concepts and thus more easily comprehend the given descriptions of Paradise Isle, the Central Universe, space respiration, and force circulations. A new and evolving 3D master universe model can become a framework for scientists and Urantia scholars to build upon by incorporating current and historical astronomical observations. Models, be they of planetary orbits of solar systems, or the three-dimensional structures of the spike proteins help us understand relationships. We model particles, molecules, structures, planets, galaxies, and even universes. The word model comes from the Latin modulus, which means a measure. In English, the term was first used in the 16th century to note plans for a building. By definition, a model is an informative representation of something. We present a three-dimensional computer-generated model of revelatory cosmology as described in the Urantia book. Coding the Master Universe model began in 2019 by David Neufer, editor of the Master Universe Almanac. Revelation students have modeled concepts in their minds to aid with understanding the book's relationships and they have drawn diagrams on convenient surfaces to illustrate discussion points for each other. Serious scholars have been modeling more complex representations since the book's publication in 1955. The Master Universe model is built from the center outward. At the center is the eternal Isle of Paradise. All other objects, pathways, and conditions surround it. Although the Master Universe model is coded for nearly a million objects, billions more are yet to be included. In addition to illustrating revealed cosmology, the Master Universe model lets us superimpose current and historical astronomical data. We have positioned 3,500 stars. In time, it will be possible to include galaxies, voids, galactic walls, and millions of stars and the model will change as our understanding grows. Today, we present visualizations from this model. We hope to demonstrate a reasonable method for aligning known stellar observations with revealed universe architecture.
The first star maps were the stars themselves. The stars served as maps and they helped guide us on our way. Early people did not need astronomical tables and charts filled with measurement data. Humans through time have found pictures in the stars. The first astronomical conventions were agreements among stargazers that a set of lights up there looked a little like something down here. Eventually, though, people did begin listing the stars. Ptolemy of Alexandria became famous for this. In his second century treatise called the Almagest, he cataloged over 1,000 stars and listed their locations and brightness data. Through time, astronomers have created new star charts, each adding to our evolving knowledge about the heavens. By the 20th century, the number of known stars increased dramatically. Whole sky surveys were done by multiple observatories. More powerful telescopes required greater precision to coordinate the ever-growing data streams. By mid-century, difficulties arose due to a lack of consistency in the coordinate systems being used. So the International Astronomical Union defined a very specific coordinate system based on the 21 centimeter atomic hydrogen line for the galactic fundamental plane and a radio source in Sagittarius A for the zero point. This convention is known as the Galactic Coordinate System, or the GCS. This sun-centered system harmonizes evolving knowledge about the placement of sky objects and facilitates theories about distances. The Urantia Papers introduced the concept of a paradise-centered absolute direction. Let's take a look at what the authors tell us about the position of paradise, its relation to space, and how the mother force of space indicates the direction of absolute north. In form, paradise differs from the inhabited space bodies. It is not spherical, it is definitely ellipsoid, being one-sixth longer in the north-south diameter than in the east-west diameter. The central aisle is essentially flat, and the distance from the upper surface to the nether surface is one-tenth that of the east-west diameter. These differences in dimensions, taken in connection with its stationary status and the greater outpressure of force energy at the north end of the aisle, make it possible to establish absolute direction in the master universe. The inner zone of this force center seems to act as a gigantic heart whose pulsations direct currents to the outermost borders of physical space. It directs and modifies force energies but hardly drives them. The reality pressure presence of this primal force is definitely greater at the north end of the paradise center than in the southern regions, this is a uniformly registered difference. The mother force of space seems to flow in at the south and out at the north, through the operation of some unknown circulatory system which is concerned with the diffusion of this basic form of force energy.
We do not know the actual mechanism of space respiration. We merely observe that all space alternately contracts and expands. This respiration affects both the horizontal extension of pervaded space and the vertical extensions of unpervaded space, which exist in the vast space reservoirs above and below paradise. In attempting to imagine the volume outlines of these space reservoirs, you might think of an hourglass. There is a confluence of pervaded and unpervaded space just underneath nether paradise. Both types of space there, flow through the transmuting regulation channels, where changes are wrought making pervadable space non-pervadable and vice versa, in the contraction and expansion cycles of the cosmos. We really know very little about the space reservoirs, merely that they exist, and that they seem to counterbalance the space expansion contraction cycles of the universe of universes. The cycles of space respiration extend in each phase for a little more than 1 billion Urantia years. During one phase the universes expand, during the next they contract. Pervaded space is now approaching the midpoint of the expanding phase, while unpervaded space nears the midpoint of the contracting phase, and we are informed that the outermost limits of both space extensions are, theoretically, now approximately equidistant from paradise. The unpervaded space reservoirs now extend vertically above upper paradise and below nether paradise, just as far as the pervaded space of the universe extends horizontally outward from peripheral paradise, to and even beyond the fourth outer space level. Paradise is motionless, being the only stationary thing in the universe of universes. The Isle of Paradise has a universe location but no position in space. Space does not exist on any of the surfaces of Paradise. If one looked directly up from the upper surface of Paradise, one would see nothing but unpervaded space going out or coming in, just now, coming in. Space does not touch Paradise, only the quiescent midspace zones come in contact with the central isle. The Galactic Coordinate System was established in 1959. It uses the Earth's Sun as its center and is incremented from zero to 360 degrees. Zero degrees is defined by the position of Sagittarius A. It has specific north and south poles. Absolute direction is described in the Urantia book, published in 1955. It is centered on the Isle of Paradise and employs the cardinal directions north, south, east, and west. From our position, Sagittarius A indicates the direction to Paradise Center. galactic coordinate system and revealed absolute direction share a fundamental plane. But which way is up? The papers provide clues that may help us with the answer. These clues give us reason to suspect that the poles of the GCS must be reversed 
to align with absolute direction. This reversal is done by rotating stellar positioning 180 degrees along an axis formed by the Sun and Sagittarius A. For all of its object placements, the Master Universe model uses specific information given in the book as well as information reasonably surmised. To explain polar reversal, we examine Andromeda, or M31, and the Cygnus star-forming region. The intriguing topic of Andromeda's distance will not be covered here. However, revealed evidence allows the model to place Andromeda in the primary outer space level. If the galactic coordinate system did align with absolute direction, then Andromeda would be moving clockwise in the south, while we on the super universe level are moving counterclockwise towards the north. Presumably, moving in opposite directions would cause Andromeda to exhibit positive redshift, which it does not. However, reversing the GCS poles shows Andromeda in the east moving clockwise toward us. Toward us, that is, in its separate lane of travel. Objects moving closer exhibit a negative redshift, or a blue shift, and Andromeda does show a measured blue shift. Now on to Cygnus. The Urantia book states, a sun-forming nebula just north of the borders of Orvington, but within the super-universe space level, has already given origin to approximately 40,000 suns. Research astronomers tell us this about Cygnus. The Cygnus X complex represents the most powerful star forming region at less than two kiloparsecs or nearly six and a half thousand light years from us. Also that Cygnus X is the nearest massive star forming region. Its core, Cygnus OB2, represents the most obvious example of recent star formation. Since this is the case, we can surmise that the papers are referring to Cygnus as the sun-forming nebula just north of the borders of Orvington. Not only does this identify Cygnus as the likely sun-forming region, but also indicates how close Urantia is to Super Universe 1 less than 6,000 light years. The following quote contributes to this understanding. Satania is on the periphery of the local universe, and Nebadon is now well out towards the edge of Orvington. So this is why the Master Universe model reverses the GCS poles and sets the stars in the manner it does.
through the realization of truth. The appreciation of beauty leads to the sense of the eternal fitness of those things, which impinge upon the recognition of divine goodness in deity relations with all beings. And thus even cosmology leads to the pursuit of divine reality values to God consciousness.